sometimes you have no choice but to bend handles. I'll give you three examples and I'm going to show you when you need to bend a handle and how to bend it and so far I've never broken a handle. I've broken tips if you watched my other video on um, bending blades but bending handles is relatively easy and it's fairly safe if you follow what I'm going to tell you to do and um, it's something that you really can't get around. You have to, there's sometimes you have to bend handles. I just, what brought this video about is I got these in for sharpening today. And look at them. How do you make them close? Well, you have to bend the handle. If the handle was bent that much, and I have no idea how that happened. It was, it's kind of interesting to me. Uh, maybe it's really strong gorilla hands. The bumper's gone. So if the bumper was there, they would be even wider apart. Um, who knows? But the only way to fix them is I would have to bend the handles. Two other examples. Here's a, here's a scissor. Let's see if I can bring it up here close. Do you see how the, the tip should be right about here? And But when it's closed all the way, it overlaps. See, it's going this way. And the bumper, I could put a bigger bumper in here to make it work but I would have to be a pretty huge bumper and that would be pretty ugly so this one is I need to bend it the other way so I need to bend it so that the blades will come together correctly and this is the type of thing that can fool you you've sharpened a thinning shear you think it's fine you go to test it and it's like what's wrong with it I know I have it sharp and what's happened you see the blades are overlapped so much that it's actually pinching the hair. Can you see that? So when I close it, see, it pinches the hair. And in my early days of sharpening, I ran across this a few times and it just, until I figured out what was going on, I was really baffled. So these are three examples of handles you have to bend. So this is the tool that I'm currently using for bending handles. Um, it's pretty easy to use. I've used a couple of other ones. This one seems to be the easiest and the most economical. The key to it is how much can you squeeze. Now, I'm going to show you on my drink. Just went to the Greek restaurant. I'm going to squeeze this. Do you see how much squeezing? This is just a regular cardboard cheap cup. Um, I'm squeezing it about that much. I'm not squeezing here. I'm squeezing gently so you can see the amount of squeeze. If you can squeeze that much and you feel the blade, you feel the handle bend, you're good to go. If it won't bend, I would walk away from it. When you look at this, you can feel pretty assured that that handle is going to bend because there was no way it got into that position without uh, bending the handle. So, which way do you hold this handle bender? Whichever direction you want that handle to bend. So, in this case, I want the handle to bend out. That's where I put the middle peg. So I'm going to put it here. Can you see? And I'm going to squeeze about like I squeezed on that cup. <coughs> and I'm feeling it bend. Now, I mean, if you want to be safe, you might want to wear safety goggles or safety glasses so that you're not doing this. Man, that's not bending easy. Well, I know it'll bend. Okay, can you see it move? There it's going. Ah, a little closer. And I might alternate handles so I'm not squeezing one, overly squeezing it. So I'm bending it. And I don't have very strong hands, and I'm just gently bending it. Close, can you see just little bit there I need to bend it but then I've got to leave room for a bumper I think I'm going to bend this this handle because it's longer I've got a little bit more room to bend it can you see it move did you see it move now that's right on the money but I have to put in a bumper so I would probably put my bumper in 
before I bend any more. And you see, it looks like that bumper isn't even lining up where it's supposed to be. Hmm. This is, this is a pretzel of a scissor. I've never come across this before. Even though I'm bending it in, I need to bend it in so see that it matches up there. Somebody must have, husband got, got mad at her or something other, and took her scissors and tried to make them into pretzels. This is like, I've only once seen one this bad, and it was, um, it was someone was um, doing some fantasy hair, and they had taken all the hair and made it into a really thick, like a stick, with a bunch of hairspray and gel. Uh-oh. Too much. A bunch of hairspray and gel, and then they cut through it. And they said, well, I was only cutting hair with it. So with a bumper, I think I've got it. Because the bumper is going to be about that big. And so the tip is here. So now I'll need to sharpen it. But that's... It's going to work, but that's... That handle does it was not shaped like it was originally. That is a crazy thing. Anyway, these type of bending is a lot more common, and this is easier. Now you see, this is overlapping, and I want to bring it out to right about here. You see that? And so I need to bend it in about this much. Now do you notice one of them has an insert ring? I don't bend with the insert ring because that gives you a false reading of it being soft. But I want to bend it in. So I'm putting it here. Do you see that? And once again, that little bit of a squeeze. And this is easier. Do you see how it just lined up there? And it's touching. And that was it. That was all that was to that one. That's easy. This one is kind of the same way. Do you see how the, I, I want to have it bent out to about here. And so once again, that's going to be bending in. So as I said, the middle one goes to the direction you want the handle to bend. And of course, this isn't how I'd be holding it, but I'm holding it so you can see what's going on. And I'm bending it. And that's where I am. Now, just to show you where I'm bending it, I'm going to take my, gl my glass and I'm bending it about here. Now, when I can feel it give a little bit right here, I know I can bend it and then I can squeeze up to about there. So that's about the pressure I want to use. So this is, to me, this is an essential part for my sharpening. It may not be something I, I had... I think I went the first two or three years without having anything like this, and then I got to where I would get my husband, Gene, who's got big gorilla hands, and he would bend them for me. And I'd say, hey, Gene, bend this for me, and he, he could just bend it by his hand. And then um, he's not always with me when I'm sharpening, so this this was a handy little tool. As I said, I've had it two or three different styles of it, but this right now is my favorite. So if you have any questions, um, subscribe to me on YouTube. If you're a sharpener, you want to subscribe and have notifications. You can put the little bit, I think there's a little bell to give you notifications because I'm going to be uploading um, various types of uh, videos on little tips on sharpening and ideas. And um, please comment and, and share if you have other sharpeners. And um, if you have any questions, be free, feel free to call us. And as you see all the things behind us, no one carries a larger supply of sharpening um, um, parts, you know, like this one needs a finger rest, this one needs a bumper, we have all of those things for you.